Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 40 to 43 of section 3 of the orange booklet. So this is a question about ions being deflected through an electrical and a magnetic field. Uh, I've drawn out the apparatus here, but there's a better figure in the paper itself. Question 40 says the speed of an ion passing through slit S3 is given by what? Okay, so I've got a diagram here. Um, of just the isolated region that we're going to be working with. Um, so we've got two of these electrodes here, M and N. M is positively charged and N is negatively charged. Uh, so this creates an electrical field, uh, which we can denote with E. If you've not seen these equations before, E can be used to denote the magnitude of the electric field here. Um, we've also got another force, obviously, with ions passing through this, you get a magnetic force too. Um, and this magnetic field is called B1. At S3, then we have B2 that happens. So really the question here is asking what forces are happening at this point here? Um, so because at this point, uh, the ion hasn't passed through S3, um, the speed of the ion going through slit S um, is going to be due to B1 and E here. Um, so that's why we can leave B2 out of the equation. So we've got these two equations that they've given us. So we could actually just combine these and say QE equals QVB. We can divide by Q on both sides and get E equals VB. And remember, we're dealing with B1 here. Okay, so then the velocity, which is what we're trying to find, is going to be E divided by B1. And that gives us answer B. 41 says the particular arrangement of the electrical and magnetic fields in the region between M and N is designed to do what? Okay, so if you've got an ion that's passing through down this way, you need it to have um, a number of things that are consistent. You've got lots of different ions passing through and they all need to have some of the same properties so that they all deflect the same way. So the idea of this photographic plate is that it will strike at certain points and where they strike can tell you a little bit about the charge. So the more charged it is, the more it will be deflected. And so you know that this will have, say, a, a two minus charge or a positive charge, and this would have a one plus charge or whatever. Now, the reason for this is that we're measuring the charges on the ions that pass through. And so making sure that they all have the same charge going through this um, is going to defeat the point of this, because then you'd only get one line. It wouldn't matter where it hit. Um, so it's not going to be D. A says obtain a thin beam of ions at S3. Um, we're told that a thin beam of ions is produced due to the presence of S1 and S2, so that's not going to be it either. B says it reduces the number of ions arriving. Um, it will make sure that, of course, they remain on their straight path that was defined by S1 and S2. But importantly, and this is the, the key thing here, it ensures that the ions passing through S3 have the same velocity. It means they have a certain amount of energy, and then whenever this known electric field and magnetic field is applied to it, when it's deflected, you can identify what the ions are by where they hit on this plate here. So that's just a bit of background about how this sort of thing works, if you haven't seen it before. And so really the, the point of this is that you have to make sure that all of the ions have the same velocity, so they have the same energy, so that whenever they're deflected, they follow certain known paths so that you can identify the ions when they hit the photographic plate. So it's going to be C for 41. It's making sure that they all have the same velocity, it keeps everything equal. 42 says the speed of an ion of mass m just before it strikes the photographic plate is given by what? So I've written um, down the equation here that I think is most useful and of course we're dealing with B2 here. So we've passed S3 and so B2 is the magnetic field that we're going to be considering in this one instead of B1. Okay, so let's think about what sort of things affect the speed of an ion. Remember that velocity here is going to be a little bit different um, to speed, especially whenever it's traveling in the semicircular path. So if we were to think about what sort of things affect the speed, well, this is the force, the energy that it has, essentially. Um, so the force is going to be proportional to the speed. And therefore, everything on the right hand side of this equation is going to be proportional to speed as well. Um, how is mass going to affect the speed? Well, mass is going to mean that more work needs to be done. Um, and if you're dealing in terms of force, you need to remember that it's going to be 
proportional to one over speed or inversely proportional to speed. The heavier it is, the more force you'll need and the slower it might go. So that means that we've got two parameters. And if we were to define it in terms of speed, we could say speed is going to be proportional to force over mass, essentially a work equation. And we've been given um, another way of identifying force here. And we've been told that we can just call it QVB2 over M. And that gives us uh, an answer of A for question 42. And then 43 says, if the mass to charge ratio of negatively charged ions were to be determined by the apparatus, it'd be simplest to reverse the direction of what? Okay, so I've drawn again another isolated diagram of the little thing we're, we're looking at here. Um, so let's think about what's happening at all these different points and to think about what the effect of reversing them would have. So here we've already said we've got two things. We've got E and we've got B1. And then at S3, we've got B2. We've already talked about how this is for a uniform velocity. And this is for deflection. So what changes if you change the charge on the particles are passing through this. Well, they're going to deflect in the opposite direction. So if you're going to reverse one of them, it has to be the deflection. The other thing you could do, of course, is to look at how you could change the uniform velocity and make sure that um, they follow a certain path beforehand. Um, but if you are expecting them to deflect in a certain way, um, you need to make sure that B2 is going to be reversed if you're going to reverse the charge on the ions too. If this is the magnetic field, which is moving the ions and the ions become reversed in their charge, so they go from positive to negative, then you need to reverse um, B2. So that sort of rules out A and C because we can understand the importance of B2. But we're also told what is the simplest way to reverse or what's the simplest thing to reverse. So do you need to reverse B1? No, you don't because you're still going to have a uniform velocity. The point of B2 is so that you get deflections. The answer for this one is going to be B. So that was questions 40 to 43 of section 3 of the Orange Book. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.